And everybody, welcome to Moving with the Keyboard using Processing JavaScript with me, Tokyo EdTech. So before we begin, let me give a quick shout out to my members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel directly. I really appreciate it. So today what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be moving something on the screen using the keyboard. And so we need to learn a little bit about the coordinate system, uh, which is like X and Y. It's a little different probably to what you're used to. We're going to learn a little bit about movement physics, like how things move. And we're going to take a look, of course, at how do we read input from the keyboard, move things left, move things right. What do we do when a key is pressed? And also, of course, this is going to require some use of conditionals, which are if statements. So let's go ahead and get started. So there'll be a link down below. But basically, I'm on this website called editor.p5js.org. And this is the default code that comes up. Now, you can go ahead and sign up and create a free account if you don't already have one. But you can just play around with it and not have to do that. So if I go ahead and hit the Run icon here, and you'll see how this is what we get. So we've created a canvas that's 400 by 400. Now, I don't really like that size. Uh, I'm going to change this to 300. And that's important. If you don't do that, the numbers aren't going to match up later. Let's go ahead and run that again. Now we have like a, a little bit wider than it is taller. And then this background changes the background color. Now, this, is, this can be done in like RGB style. So let's say we wanted uh, no red, let's say a little bit of green, and let's say a lot of blue. So we got RGB, and we run that. Now I got this nice little background. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to put a circle in the middle of the screen. And when I press the W button, it's going to go up. When I press the S button, it's going to go down. When I press A, it's going to go left. And when I press D, it's going to go right. So that's our job today. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to look at, and this is you know what I was talking about under coding concepts, is the coordinate system of this particular program. So if I go back to this screen, up here, this is 0, 0. And you see here, we said this is 400 wide. So over here is 400, 0. Okay. Now, this is where it differs a little bit from what you're probably used to. Typically, when we go down in what's called a Cartesian plane, y becomes negative. But for some reason, this doesn't work that way. <laughs> y actually becomes positive. So if I go down from here, my x is still 0, but my y is now 300. Now 300 comes from here. So 400, 0, and then down here would be 400x, 300y. So keep that in mind when you're programming. We're trying to move things around. Um, x is positive to the right. Negative, like you, if you move to the left, x gets lower. Um, if you go up, y gets lower. And if you move down, y gets higher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating a ball. And the ball is going to have an x. And we're going to start it in the middle of the screen. So now the screen is 400 wide, so 0, 400. So the middle, of course, is going to be 200. And then I'm going to say ball y equals, same thing, 0. Down here is 300, so the middle is 150. Okay. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and run it and see what happens. And basically, you see nothing happens. This is to be expected. Just because we said there's an x and a y we're keeping track of doesn't mean we actually created any type of object like that. So what we have to do is inside this function, now don't type down here. Okay, A lot of my students do this. Um, this function starts here and ends here. So what I got to do is add a few lines and say draw the ball. And to draw the ball, I'm going to use the circle command. And I'm going to draw it at ball x, ball y. And I'm going to make the diameter 20 pixels. Okay, so if I go ahead and run that, now I've got a ball. And it's 20 pixels wide. The center is at 200 and in x and 150 in y. Okay, so, so far, so good. Now, the next part to, is here in the coding concepts is movement physics, dx and dy. Now, dx stands for change in x. dy stands for change in y. So right now, it's not moving, okay? because it's stationary. So what I need to do is I need to create some variables here. So I'm going to say ball dx equals 0, ball dy equals 0. 0 means no change. Okay, So 
keep that in mind. Well, actually, tell you what, let's go ahead and do it this way. Let's go ahead and do one DX. Okay, now if I run this, nothing's happening. Okay, again, a lot of beginning programmers assume, oh, well, DX is one, why isn't it moving? It's not automatic. You have to tell it what to do with that. So down here, I'm gonna go ahead and add some more code uh, to say, move the ball. So to do this, I'm gonna say ball X plus equals ball DX and ball Y plus equals ball DY. And what this will do, so in this particular case, ball X is 200. So this draw function is actually repeated constantly over and over and over and over again. So ball X is 200. We add DX to it, which is one. So it becomes 201 comes back around 202, 203, 204, 205, 206, 207, etc., etc. So what will happen is the ball should start moving to the right. Let's go ahead and run that. Okay, you see it does move to the right and it moves right off the screen. Okay, now if we go ahead and did dy equals one and reran it, see now it's moving diagonally and down. Okay, if we do negative one, for dx, it's going to move to the left, but still down because dy is positive. And if we want it to move up and to the left, negative x, negative y. And of course, like I said, it moves right off the screen. Okay. So this is the kind of this is the basics of how things move, uh, at least in the real world, um, to a certain extent. Of course, there's friction and gravity and things, but we're going to ignore that in this particular case. So what we want to do next is the keyboard portion. So if we go back, we'll be looking at inputting keys. So as I mentioned before, it's going to be W for up, S for down, A for left, and D for right. If we play games, this is no surprise. Um, so as a programming approach, what a lot of beginners do is they just copy all the code and then it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, what you need to do is to do this step by step. Okay. If you've gotten to this point, and you've like say changed DX, you change DY, and you run it, and nothing happens. Don't keep going. It's not just going to magically fix itself. So that's just one of my one of my little coding pet peeves. I don't understand why you would think it would fix itself if it's not working at this stage. Um, so I'm going to deal now with the keyboard input. Now this is a feature. Or this is a feature of processing JS. So they have these certain built-in variables that we can use. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do if key is pressed, okay? So you can see how that turned pink as soon as I finished it. That tells you it's something that processing recognizes. It's one of the processing variables that's built in. So this tells us if a key is pressed or not. So I'm gonna say, so up. Uh, let's do, let's, that'll decay. We do left, doesn't matter. So if the key equals W. Okay. Now, W is up. So in this case, if we want to go up, DY is going to have to become negative. So what we'll do down here is we'll say ball DY equals negative one. Okay. Now, this is where I'm going to run it. Okay. The ball is stationary. You might have to click over here to make sure it has what's called focus. Now I'm going to press W and see what happens. Okay, so now the ball floats up and off the screen. So I know now that this is working. If it's not working, don't keep typing code. It's not going to fix itself. You got to get this working first. So now that I've got one working, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and I'm going to paste it. So W, A, S, and D. So, so we'll do W. Let's do W, S first, so down. And that's going to be S. And so in this case, D, Y is positive. So it's going to give us one. Then we'll do left, which is A. And in this case, it's not D, Y that's changing. We're not going up and down. We're going left and right. So it's dx. So left is dx is negative one because x gets lower and lower each time. And then let's go ahead and do right. 
is A and that is D. And again, same thing. This is DX and this is going to be positive. So now I'm going to go ahead and test this. So I can do A is, oops, A is left, D is right. Watch what happens when I push W. Okay, and then I'm going to push S. So up and down is working, left and right is working. But you can see how it moves diagonally now. And if you want that, that's fine. And that's not a big deal. We could, we could do that. Um, but if we wanted something that was a little bit more just vertical. Because what's happening is if X is positive and Y is positive, it moves right up, right up, right up, right up, right up. Or actually, uh, sorry, DY is negative. So right up, right up, right up, right up. Okay. So what we can do is when we go up, we set ball DX to zero. So ball DX equals zero. So we're only moving one direction at a time. Now in this case, it's going to be ball DY equals zero. And then in this case, it'll be ball DY equals zero. Okay, so go ahead and test that. And so there's a W up, S down, A left, D right. So now we have a bit more, I don't know if you know Pac-Man, but it's kind of moving up, down, left, and right. Okay, so that is pretty much how that goes. Um, that's about what I wanted to cover in this. But I want to cover one more thing since we're here. Um, what I want to happen is, let me see, run that again. What I want to happen is when it goes off the screen, I want it to jump over here and just keep going. Okay, so it's just kind of going around and around and around. When it goes up here, it's going to jump back down to here. Okay, so let's deal with that. So, so we'll call it check the borders here. So if we're moving right, so if the ball X is greater than, let's say 400. Okay, so if it's greater than 400, that means it's out here somewhere. We want the X to come back to zero. So we say ball X equals zero. Let's go ahead and run that. And this gets out, boom, and it pops over. Now notice, 400, this is the center of the ball. So when it gets about halfway off the screen, it jumps right back to there. Okay. So by the same token, we could do the same thing on the left side of the screen. But watch this one carefully, because this is where students often mess up. So if I put 0 here and 400 here, and I run this, it's not going to work right. Okay, so let's go ahead and watch this. It basically gets stuck at the border. Okay, I can still move up and down, but if I try to move right, it does this little flashy thing. Okay, so it's the reason is that this is greater, all of this is greater than 0. So I need to reverse the sign here. So if it's less than 0, which is going off the screen, then I jump it over to 400. So I rerun that and x0, zero, zero, boom, and then boom. So I can go back and forth off and on the screen. Now by the same token, I could just do the same thing with uh, y. So ball y, in this case it's 300 because it's only 300 tall. Don't forget to change that to y. And zero, ball y is 300. Okay, because remember, we did 400 by 300. Let's go ahead and do that again. So I'm going to test it, make sure nothing broke. So I just want to make sure this still works as, as it did before. And then now I'm going to add the extra test. It does up and down work. Okay, so you can see it works pretty well. And there you have it. So that is the basics of how you do kind of smooth motion with uh, JavaScript and processing. So just to recap, we created X and Y variables for our ball. We created DX and DY, which controls the X speed and the Y speed, respectively. We've got a canvas. It's 400 pixels wide by 300 pixels tall. We chose a background color. In this case, it was a kind of bluish color. We moved the ball by adding DX to X and dy to y, and we talked about you know positive is right, positive is down, negative is left, negative is up. We talked about why that's the case. We check to see if a key was pressed, and if that key is pressed, and if a key is pressed, then we check. If it's a w, we're gonna go up, so dy is negative one, dx is zero. If it's down, dy is positive, 
So that's dx is zero, so we use s. Now note, s and I think capital S would be different. So if you have caps lock on, it might not work. So make sure you're using big and small there. And then left is dx negative one and dy is zero, and right is one and zero. Uh, we talked, just talked about the borders, so I won't repeat that, but I think you get the idea there. And then at the end of all this, we just go ahead and draw the ball. That is it. Thanks for watching. Uh, keep on coding. Take care.